going, I'd like for you to stand together. We're going to go into Scripture. Nowhere else we should start but there. Today we have Scripture that talks about dipping folks in the water, what it means and what it should mean. What we like to do here at Drennan is if you've not led the call to worship of Scripture, please volunteer for that so we hear new voices. Is there someone here that has not ever led the Drennan call to worship that would like to today? Because it's wide open. Thank you, Doug. Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. Now I'm just going to have an awkward pause right there. You need to believe. If we believe what Scripture says and what we say we believe in Scripture, then it's about believing in Him as Lord and Savior. When we pass away from this earth or when Jesus comes back before we pass away, if we're not on His side, on His team, it's not just over. It's an eternity, whichever way. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We want to serve with eternity with Jesus in a good place. Not the other way around. Let's pray. Lord, we pray this morning that it is a good day of worship. That we celebrate you. We celebrate decisions made for you. It's not about us. It's not about our our little church here in Grand Springs. It's not even about the six folks going in the water. It's about you. You, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, have called us to you. And when we accept that call, we know you rejoice. We thank you for today with all that is happening. And now as a church family and guests and friends and family of church family, to affirm our belief, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you would stay standing together, we're going to have one hymn that we celebrate together for Holy Communion. After this hymn, we will take communion together as a family of our church. We have communion that's prepared that will be passed. But if you are of the type that doesn't want to handle things that have been passed, we do have the prepared communion in the back on the table right as you come in the door. Leading our uh, hymn today and hopefully going forward a whole bunch is Miss Amanda Workman. So I'm going to get out of her way. Good morning.
You'll maybe see that if our servers can come up.
This represents my blood that will be shed for the for sin. Do this in remembrance of me. As always, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you're good, all that you've done, and all that you will do. In your name we pray. Amen. No, our offering is at the table. We don't pass that around anymore. So if you have any offering for the church, that's there. We'll handle a love offering for Tim in just a few minutes. But at the end of our communion offering, uh, just I'll mention online, if you're watching, and I know we have folks to do, you can send your tithes or offerings to Drennan Christian Church, P.O. Box 495, Newcastle, Kentucky, 40050. Now, if we could, let's stand for the doxology. We'll sing this a cappella, or as Barney Fine would say, Acapulco style. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. More than we can count. Uh, just we're surrounded by them. I have goosebumps with some of the many blessings that are surrounding me and my sight right now. Bless this worship today and let it be a new beginning for all of us in this room. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. You may be seated. We keep a prayer list here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some of us have the Midas touch, some of us don't. Troy usually does. Usually does. So prayer concerns, we have a bulletin if you have one. Uh, if not, you can follow along with us here. Just a couple of updates we'll give that are new this weekend and this morning. You all uh, know that one of our elders, Earl Holmes Jr., is not here today. And he would always be here for the baptisms because it's his land that we use and his creek that his family received from the Den Collins family in the early 1900s, but he had a hernia surgery on Friday. Doing great, surgery was fantastic. He was home by lunchtime, but he'll be laid up for a bit, so he won't be with us today. We just say a prayer for Earl, uh, that he said he'll be back as soon as possible, but just not today. Another report we had this morning was that one of our little guys, Wesley Holder, was uh, sick this morning, throwing up, and fever, so he's a two and a half, and we'd love to have him here, Hi, Owen, to see uh, his cousins and his family, his great-grandpa and everybody else who's here, but pray for Wesley that uh, he gets over that soon and that baby Sawyer doesn't get sick, and mom and daddy, right, mom and daddy. Now, open up to you all prayer concerns you all have, or praises, Laura. Uh, my first pin, anyway, he came with me last year, yeah. he was here. Um, he's still driving truck at 73, but fell out of the back of the trailer, maybe. Um, five broken ribs, front and back, they did surgery on that Friday to put metal and screws in there, put them together. His lung had collapsed, uh, his liver was lacerated, he broke his wrist, and they had to operate on that as well. So he is still out in Idaho Falls in the hospital, I'm not sure for how long. Niagara Falls. I, I, yeah, Idaho, Idaho Falls. Idaho Falls, that sounds good too. So, wow. He needs offer. Pray for Ken. Ken has been in this place a few times. Mm -hmm. Who else today? Hey. Our uh, next door neighbor, uh, Betty Preston, passed away. Oh. Um, just Was that expected? Pregnant. Yeah, she's been uh, fighting a battle with cancer oh. for the past few years. Just prayers for their family. And they have a funeral Monday and visitation today. So I'm sorry to hear that. Your neighbor. And the crossroads of the county, really. Man. And you all might see the bottom of your prayer list. We have crosses next to her name. Little Ember, who was four, right? She had turned four. Um, I thought she hadn't turned four yet, but she was four and she lost her battle. She's been sick for how long, Casey? I mean, a good while. And they knew this was probably coming, but the timeline sped up. I know a lot of y'all been praying for Little Ember, but what we heard three to six months a couple weeks ago, and now she's gone. 
some prayers for the family of that sweet child, four years old. Miss Jane. A friend of ours, Lucian Corey, is having a pacemaker put in Tuesday. Uh, and what's the last name? C O L E. C O L E. Pacemaker. Mm -hmm. Do they hope that will alleviate the concerns? Okay. I know they can do wonders. Lucian Cole, pacemaker. Troy. Phil. Phil. He's in the back. Hard to see. Hey, Phil. Yes. Eighty-eight pounds. So she's the wife of someone you fish in tournaments with, Margaret Farnsley. Glenda Hancock. Sorry to hear that. Massive stroke. So unexpected. Trisha, we'll keep it right there. Yes. Oh, gosh. And he's what, in his 20s? 25. And shot in another city? Uh, D.C. Catholic University in Washington, D.C. An altercation, and he ran, and he was a teacher and coach at Oldham County High School. Wrestling coach, yes. And that would be devastating to the entire student body and all of Oldham County for something like that. Kathy. Um, there was a house fire on South Park Road this morning, and my nephew was there, so I texted him to make sure they were okay. But he said it was his neighbor, their name is and Ronnie Grigsby. Ronnie Grigsby. I know, Paula, you were asking about that house fire since you were at the Ronnie Grigsby's house. I'm pretty sure everybody got out of the house okay, but he doesn't know, you know, all the details. So. Okay. Yeah. so anybody that's out that way, south property, Ronnie Grigsby's house was the house on fire. Update when we can. Daryl. Uh, Just let me know when you find that name and put her in here. People we'll pray for her. <coughs> Harriet. Uh, Trisha's uh, brother Jimmy. Do you want to pray for him? It's just like up and down. Is that what you said, Trisha? Some days, good days, good days. Good days. You know, Trisha's brother Jimmy, there have been times you all thought he was gone. And then there have been times you thought he was rebounding, and it's been back and forth and back and forth. No, no, no. And she just lost her brother not too many years back. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Bart. Well, Jessica and... I have pictures. Say more. And prayers for fast healing, fast growing. He is spectacular, isn't he? Awesome. After the last prayer request or praise, I will show you two pictures that uh, Jessica approved to show. And my, my. Any others today? All right, before we pray, four pounds, 14 ounces, 17.32 uh, inches, seven weeks early. He'll be in the NICU. She has a live stream. She can watch him 24 hours a day on her phone. And uh, that's going to be coming home soon, right? I think the plan was this afternoon, but maybe tomorrow now. Okay. No hurry. No hurry. And she wanted this picture to be shown because you can see his peepers. There you go. That's right. Y'all, he's ours. Let's let's surround Jessica and surround baby Casper Axel Rome Gerlach with all our love. And Kinsley as well. And the rest. Let's pray now. Exactly. 
Lord Jesus, we come to you with these names today. Over a dozen brought to our attention this morning, as well as the names that are already on the list in a microscopic font. Never an end to those we need to pray for. The biggest part of that is that implies a relationship with you, Lord. An open conduit. We don't have to go through a priest or anyone else. We talk to Jesus. We pray to our Heavenly Father. We have the Holy Spirit in our hearts. It's in the name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Just a few announcements, not many, don't want to take much time. Um, oh, before we do that, sorry, the celebrations too. You have a new calendar, newly updated. We had a couple of omissions or mistakes last week, so you might think, we just got a calendar last week. Well, you got a new one this week, and the best part about it is Luke's picture's now on it, so if you want Luke to sign your calendar, he's right in the back. He'll be here all day. But this week we have... Uh, couple of birthdays, both of whom I hope will be here at some point today. They're not here yet. I know that 11 o'clock is just a suggestion, and sometimes there are reasons. And one of the birthdays, there's a legitimate reason they'll be running late, so hopefully we can get those birthdays. If not today, then next week. Are there any other birthdays in the house that we don't know about in this calendar? Okay, nobody's admitting it. We do have an anniversary this week, we know for sure. Am I right, Casey Banton? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Ron, you better scoot away from your son because he's about to get it. What about it, Casey? Okay, okay, just checking. <laughs> All right, how many years have been? Or how many years will it be this Thursday? Let's see. This just gets worse and worse. You were married right here. Oh. We're going to sing Happy Anniversary Barbara Casey before they get any worse, okay? He says four. All right. We don't know if it's four years of marriage or if he's four years old inside. Take your shoes off to count. Happy Anniversary to you. Happy Anniversary to you. Happy Anniversary, Barbara and Casey. Happy anniversary to you. Many, many more. That's right. More than four. Let's help Casey remember, man, for sure. All right. A few announcements what we have coming up. You see a picture on the screen that says karaoke. That's next Sunday night at 7. See Bill Smith, Wild Bill, or Cowboy Bill, depending on where you karaoke with him. He's got different names. That is next Sunday night at 7 o'clock. We were going to have a shower for Jessica next Sunday right after worship. So Barb will inform us all where, when, how. This was a contract, so you don't get out unless you sign up. Right. Yeah. It does exist, yes. We have your name. It's just postponed, Yeah, it's happening. It's happening. Um, there's a picture to the left of the karaoke. It says The Essential Church. We received an advanced copy of that movie that's going to be out in theaters in a couple of weeks about the church that wouldn't close down during COVID in California. We're showing it the night of the 23rd here, 7 o'clock. That's the only time we can show it that day, so come on to it. This week on Wednesday, we're showing a movie at the bottom left of the screen, Running the Bases. I've had a couple of the men of the church request that we show this new Christian baseball movie, and it's pretty good. We'll be showing it. Dread and Softball, top right corner. Our games are Tuesday night. We play at 7 and 8, weather permitting, at Harry Hill Park. Be there. I know a lot of you come to the games. Some of you play. We've got several of our players here today, and a lot of our fans here today. We also have Drennan uh, softball shirts. If you need one of those, I have them upstairs. I can get you one anytime. Now, Harriet, you have here at Clipboard Christian Church. What do you got on there? This Wednesday is taco theme for oh, Wednesday night Bible study. I forgot about that. And the other one is for karaoke on Sunday. What will you bring? Right, so two food items there. Wednesday night taco bar. We've done it before. It's been a lot of fun. And karaoke night, what food, snacks you'll bring. That's not really a meal. That's more like a grazing snack fun. We're not done with clipboards because, Kathy, what do you got? <laughs> There's two more after you, too. Ladies did a book club last fall. 
we get the book The Hiding Place. And the movie is coming out in August. It's going to be out August the 3rd and August the 5th, two showings. Um, the 3rd is on a Thursday, the 5th is on a Saturday. So I was thinking if the ladies maybe wanted to get together and go to one of the movies, if we did Saturday, we could maybe even do an early brunch because the only show time is at 3. Yeah, these are the only showings. So, Pass that around. There's, uh, enjoy yourself with the clipboards while you worship. <laughs> Linda's got another one. We got Linda. This is more related to the prayer concerns, but yeah, go ahead. I want to bless uh, Jessica. We know that uh, she had major surgery, a C-section. If any of you ladies ever had one of those, you know you're not going to be able to live for a while. And, and we want to bless the Banta home because it's going to be quite active if she comes home Monday. So we're going to take some meals over to the bandits. And if you'd like to sign up, we're going to do it a week at a time. And then we'll start again next week if, if we find out that uh, they, they need some more help. Because uh, it's it's a new baby coming home soon, but a mother that's had surgery. And, and no wonder Casey can't remember. Don't go in here. All right, we have another one, Miss Jane Berry, over here on this side. It's we're running out of clipboards. We have to go to Walmart. So what what's going on, Miss Jane? Somewhere there is a white clipboard that has an order form. Cindy has it, I see. Okay. Shirts have. I have back to the Columbus when I go up there after church. Uh, this is a sample of the design. And um, on the clipboard, there's all the sizes, color choices, with your name and what your color choices, your sizes are. I don't know how long you want to run it, a couple weeks. Whatever works best for you. Okay, we'll do it for two weeks. I'll have a Bible study on Wednesday, have it one this afternoon, have it back next Sunday. And I don't know how you want to handle it with money. Is that true? Don't talk to the preacher about money. I'll just run to Mexico. Just talk to Mark. The design that you see that Jane has on that shirt is one that uh, I was given a few years back, and we've been trying to get to it, and now Jane has fallen into our church family, and she prints shirts. It's another gift to our church is somebody with another skill. So if you want to see that, you can see it today, you know, later on. And also, Jane has done lots of custom shirts that you see around the place. So talk to Jane, okay? Talk to Jane. We'll figure that out. The last one I think I have is the... The directory is a coming. So keep marking it if you're a new family and you're saying, I'm at Drenage. Write your info here in the back. Check your information. And if you want a new picture, circle it. I have a lot of them already marked with people that have said, yeah, I need a new picture, like really bad. But if you still want one, that's fine too. So this is going to be mayhem with all these things. Anybody else have an announcement besides me? Harriet, yes, go ahead. Uh, also this Sunday, the 16th, it's going to be Hat Day. Oh, yes, Hat Day. Somebody had the idea. We will not reveal their name. She's looking at me. I'm not looking at her. But just wear hats. Now, I know that some of you might think, I don't want to wear a hat in church. That's not what I do. You don't have to. You don't have to. And if you feel like, I'll wear it, but I don't want to wear it with scripture or a prayer going on, yeah, okay, good. You don't have to wear it at all. But we're pretty casual here. The preacher's in shorts and water shoes, okay? So that's who we are. Any other announcements? All right, the best announcements we have of all are getting ready to happen, okay? We got presentations of folks that are going to be baptized and folks that have joined the church, which is amazing. Picture Jesus in the middle of his baptism, but lots of other good pictures, including some of you. You might see yourself in these pictures. Maybe not the black and white ones at the top left and bottom right corner, but those are folks in our church back when we baptized in the Kentucky River. Pretty cool. Today we go to Drennan Creek, and I remember those days. We also had a couple on this screen that were outside of this chapel because it was more like fall season, and uh, it wasn't warm enough to go on the creek. But today we're going to recognize these folks. So if I call your name, please come up. 
We went white. First off, last week, we had a new member of our church join us. She started coming several months ago and has decided to move her letter to Drain Christian Church. We have her a study Bible that suits her needs and the translation she wants. And I'd like to present that to Miss Peggy Johnson. Miss Peggy, you're here somewhere. There she is. So you all accepted her as a new member last week. And we want to equip her with what she needs. So. Thank you for gracing our church with your membership. So she'll add a lot. All right, there is more. Let's see. Ah, yes. One of our folks is going to be baptized. Now, I don't have a Bible for her because we just got her one when she joined the church just a couple months back. But our first that we'll recognize today that is going to be baptized is Miss Regina Conn. Now, this does mean with this paper that she is going in the water. So you can't back out. Don't grab her if she tries. So. Actually, stay up here because you're going to be baptized. So let's, let's start a line and move up here. Good idea. She's much smarter than I am. Now, I know William and Ambrosia are not here yet. Let me tell you, they're going to be baptized. Olivia woke up in the early, early hours and was throwing a fit, so they let her go back to sleep and said, we'll be late for your sake. So, she, so all that will get out of her system. So when they get here, we'll definitely get them. All right? All right, next we have a young couple that they're having quite a month. And this young man was actually maybe the first that came down the aisle to say, I'm going to be baptized. And he said, I'm going to do it this week and, and because we get ready to have a baby. don't know when we'll be here. So not only is Timmy going to be baptized today, and we are still taking bids for how long to hold him under. Jitter says at least two or three dips total. His own grandfather who outranks him. But Timmy and Taylor are joining our church as well. So Timmy and Taylor and Buck come on up here. It's wonderful to have Buck's name on here. So we have them uh, study Bibles in the translation they chose. This one is for Timmy. This one is for Taylor. And we'll have to set up Buck. I don't know which translation he needs. <laughs> and this one is a certificate of baptism for Timmy. And then membership for Timmy Taylor and Buck. Right here. Come over here. Come on over here. Keep them in here. You're going to get a picture? Well, yeah. And really, Miss Peggy, would you come up back up here for the picture? Oh, she looked at me like, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> All right, and we have another one. Now, Timmy's got a good friend, and Timmy and this fella, they came to church here when we first arrived 14 years ago, and they were young and silly. Now they're back, and maybe they're still silly. They ain't young anymore. Um, well, they are compared to us, but he told me he wanted to be baptized even before Timmy came down that aisle. He was waiting for him, and it's been a joy for Brandon to be coming when he can. He works every other weekend and bring his bride. Now, Ashley's a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Huey Valley, where Harriet and I and our daughter Abigail met. So that's like, whew, big time. And I also taught her the Range Elementary. So we're gonna recognize, baptizing both of them today, and Brandon joining our church. So Brandon and Ashley Hayden, come on up. Of the baptism and membership for Brandon and his boys' Bible and the translation they chose. And then for her baptism today in her Bible, Miss Ashley. So we got a bunch of them up here. And if you all could, let's give one big old clap for the whole bunch here. And we'll grab hope of William and Ambrosia when they arrive with Olivia, and hopefully Olivia is. <laughs> and William too. So you all can be seated and I'm going to have our, well, just go back amongst your family. It's going to be our fellowship time. So 
if you all uh, meet and greet for a few minutes, and then we'll come back and we'll have 10 minutes. Come on up. So this is our fellowship time. Say hey to everybody.
you heard the ladies, she's ringing the bell. She's ringing the bell. Okay, the next part of our program. Thank you, Harriet, for doing that. Everybody can find their way back. She knows how many years she's been married to Casey, too. All right. Picture on the screen. Tim Menzies comes. He's come here for our baptisms. We were talking last night, we think, four or five times at least to go to the creek. We're going to the creek today, and I'll tell you, before I turn this loose to Tim, if you weren't part of the group that was just recognized to go be baptized and join the church, it's not closed. Okay? The creek's not closed. Oftentimes we've gone down there, we've been planning to baptize four, and we baptize nine. Maybe you were part of one of those. You were part of one of those. I remember that. If that's you today, well, you just holler it out later on. Okay? Even if you're down there at the creek, you're like, oh, I'm going in. Just grab hold of the rest of us because it's slippery. I've got water shoes on. And join in the church too. I know there's folks in the building that are planning to join the church, maybe even today. When Tim wraps up, we have a benediction prayer. If that's you, just hallelujah, raise your hand or come up, whatever you want to do. We are going to take up a love offering for Tim Menzies. He comes from Nashville. Tim has played with or for or written for just about everybody you could list in country music, including Waylon and Willie and the Boys, including for Kenny Rogers. He's written for Reba McIntyre. He's written for Gene Watson, Doug Stone, Mark Chestnut, Trace Atkins, and on. And on. Patty Loveless, they keep going and on. But several years ago, Tim decided, you know, I'm going to sing for the Lord. I can stay doing country, secular music, that's fine. I'm going to sing for the Lord. So now he gets in his Honda van and drives around the countryside. At the end of the service, if you like his music, he does have copies of his music you can purchase for a pretty low price. But the love offering is just something we send home with him. And Barb, our treasurer, will take care of it at the end. But just going to pass this around while we introduce the one and only Tim Menzies. Come on up there. Thank you. 
Beginning at verse 14, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Then verse 17, for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the one and only, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. We know that when Jesus was here during his earthly ministry, for those three and a half years, he was fully God and fully human. And that's difficult for us to wrap our minds around, but it's a supernatural truth. And we read in Philippians 2 that Jesus did not see grasping the glory in heaven as something to be done, but he humbled himself and came in one of these bodies and lived among us so we could be saved. We rightfully think of it fondly that Mother Teresa spent her ministry in the slums of Calcutta. But I would submit to you today that Jesus coming from heaven to one of these is more of a demotion than the slums of Calcutta. And he subject himself to the human body for our salvation. This song is about that. I 
prepared a place we can hardly wait for you to see your home with me on my father's side We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Guilty. Wrote a song about it. Go something like this. Jesus 
says in Matthew 24, be watchful and ready. Are y'all ready? Amen. 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 We're kind of up on the hill, so uh, if we're loud enough, he'll find us uh, if he is to come back before we finish this song. And I wish he would. <laughs>
I may have shared a little bit of this story before, but uh, all of us have dealt with some form of Alzheimer's or dementia in the, dementia in the family. And uh, my mother-in-law raised my wife in the church. And my mother-in-law sang and played in the church her whole childhood and then into adult. And uh, she was in the memory unit and had gotten to the point where she didn't know us and she didn't know really her own name. And we left a little guitar in there. And you all know anybody that has experience with those memory units, nothing's where you leave it. And so it just goes around and, and then once in a while it'll show back up. And uh, she would pick that guitar up and uh, she didn't know who she was anymore. She was no longer able to read her name on her door. And she would hit a note and she would sing and so I cherish the old rugged cross. We read in First Corinthians 2 that the spiritual man just does not learn things from the wisdom of man but through the spirit. And I became convinced over those months that the spirit indwelling in us does not get Alzheimer's. It's a mind problem. And I believe that even though she couldn't communicate with us, she was still communicating with her Savior, Jesus. And don't you know that the nurses who knew that she was what they call no longer verbal, when they would hear her do that, that had to be a witness. And I'm reminded of, by divine inspiration what the Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians, that my chains are for the advancement of the gospel. We know that the gospel cannot be chained are kept in the memory unit. And the Lord communicates with us until we go home if we proceed in His Lord and Savior. Casey, where are you, sir? I didn't see you. Well, look at you being all brave sitting over there. You got away with not remembering you know, the anniversary and the years and all that. But you can only use that one time, brother. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> From here out now. <laughs> you can't use that ever again, though, see. And I'm telling you, as a man who has failed in every which way you can, and that works, it was charming this year. And I'm telling you, you pulled it out talking about it's just been so blissful that you hadn't counted and I wrote that thing. <laughs> and like, next time I can't remember the anniversary, well, honey, it's been so blissful. I'm going to count them. And uh, that's pretty slick. And uh, I got a feeling you thought of that right off the top of your head. So, you know. <laughs> now, myself, uh, I wasn't that clever when I've only been married a few years. And uh, I just kept both feet in my mouth for the first 10. And, uh, uh, my wife and I, we just had our 41st anniversary. And uh, for the first 39, she called it an annual review. Yeah. And for the first several, before I was saved and I hadn't read the Bible, she told me that was in the Bible. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, but I did read the whole thing looking for it. So that was a good tactic. And, uh, for the first 39, if the annual review went well, which, by the way, gentlemen, the review was completely hers. And it was kind of like those publishing contracts I had where all the options belong to them, whether they keep you or not. And if the review went well, we had an annual renewal. And uh, so I was kind of on the chopping block once a year. And uh, so coming up on the 40th, I lobby to be grandfathered in. And I'm thankful to tell y'all that she agreed to grandfather me in. And so I don't have to start behaving 30 days before the anniversary every year anymore. And uh, we're, we're going to 
think it out, man. She was raised in the church, and I was in a family band playing country music in bars, and uh, I don't recommend it. But we have a Savior that we read about in Romans 8.28 that can turn all things for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And Jesus took a guy from the clubs, uh, I mean my whole childhood, uh, to Drennan Christian Church on a Sunday morning in July, heading down to the water. Because we have a transforming Savior. My wife took my son to church. I wouldn't go. They came home one Sunday. And he walked up to me and I was still half asleep in the kitchen. He said, how come Mammy and Papa go to church, being her parents and me and Mom go to church, and you don't? He was about five. Trapped me in my own kitchen. And I'd rather been in one of those bars. And it got hot in that kitchen. And the Lord knew that I didn't lie to my son even when I was lost. Because I saw all the lying that went on in the clubs. And I didn't like it. And so I couldn't think of anything else to say. And I didn't know the Lord at that point. I didn't know he was doing all this. And so I didn't know what else to say. And I said, well, I'm going to start going. Because I didn't want him to stop. And so the next Sunday, I went with them to the church. In Mount Juliet, Tennessee, St. Paul's. About this size. And when I walked into that building, my writing career was going great. And I walked into that building, and I knew that there was something extraordinary that I didn't know anything about. And I later came to understand it was the presence of the Holy Spirit meeting in that building. And I wanted to go back. That was about June of 91. In the fall of 91, while studying God's Word, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior through the transforming gospel. And then I realized as I kept studying that God had used my love for my son to bring me to his son. And now I get to spend eternity with God's son and mine. That's a pretty good exchange for hell. I noticed that y'all have babies everywhere. <laughs> Congratulations. What a blessing that is. And uh, I've been told that several of them are of the male persuasion. And so I'm going to do a song that I wrote for my boy way back when. And uh, it's a blessing to see these families and see fathers. That's a blessing. We need more of that. Um. Turn that TV off and grab a fishing pole. Turn off of the highway down an old dirt road. Let him dig into the earth and pull a worm out with his hands. That's how you make a man. Teach him there's some things we say and some we don't. A friendly word will get you more of what you want. Grown ups like it when you say yes, sir, and no, ma'am. That's how you make a man. Kiss his mama every day. Let him see a love that's here to stay. A gentle strength to face the storms of life. Showing being hard don't make you strong. Say you're sorry when you're wrong. Teach him love's a higher road than pride. That's how you make a man. Be aware of changes in his little life. When he needs a hug, be sure to hold him tight. Don't back off when you know that backside needs a tan. That's how you make a man. Teach him that a dollar's something to be earned. And 
failure's just another way we all learn. Good or bad, the best days always end with amen. That's how you made the man. Kiss his mama every day, let him seal up to stay. A gentle strength to face the storms of life. Showing being hard don't make you strong. Say sorry when you're wrong. Teach him love's a higher road than pride. That's how you make a man. You turn around and he'll be grown. Raising a son of his own. Thanks to who you've been, he'll understand. How Turn that TV off and grab a fishing pole. I have a new CD and uh, so now I have too many songs. And uh, I get up here, and, uh, I usually, I pray a lot about this, and I prepare a lot, and then I know about the first song, and then the rest of it, I'm just depending on being led, and sometimes I get in the way of that. We read in Matthew, No one knows about the day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the sun. And that was in, while he was on earth, he of course knows now. But only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving marriage, up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Therefore keep watch because you do not know what day your Lord will come. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. Just like with Noah. Do y'all remember in the Old Testament who shut the door on the ark? God. The door in the age of grace, the church age, is going to close at some point. We don't know when, but my understanding of the prophecy is that it could happen before we finish this service. Uh, so we need to hurry up and get down to the creek. Uh, not that the water saves you. We know that that's a public testimony that the Lord has already been received. But if you don't know him as your Lord and Savior today, this is the perfect time. Uh, and we had a little break from the heat. Uh, it's been a blessing. And uh, we have a pastor ready to uh, take you down to the water. And uh, the profession of faith uh, would be a beautiful thing today if you're wondering about your position with Jesus. And if you do know that you're saved, in faith, by faith in Jesus Christ, there's no better day than to thank Him than today. Oh, 
along the sinking side of old Noah's door. Look up, storm clouds are rolling in. What are you waiting for? The old man said to the preacher, Son, it's too late for me. There's too much sin on my old soul, but water too much clean. The preacher said, by God, you're right, you need to be reborn. Let Jesus wash you in the blood, what are you waiting for? We say Monday, Sunday, first thing in the morning, but time slips away. Brother Guthrie on four acres, just outside that two-lane pen. One night he had a vision, saw God's plan with that piece of ground. Every board, every pew, the stained glass too. Before you could say amen, the cornerstone was set from the first nail to the steeple without a single cent of it. The whole town 
answer the call. The church went up in no time in the twinkling of an eye. Built on the rock of ages, built to stand the test of time. I grew up on stories about the sweat, the blood, the glory. I thank God I was raised in the church. Brother Guthrie ain't missed a sermon now since 1889. He's never late on Sunday. First headstone on the right, rest in peace. Thank you, sir, because in this church, I gave my heart to Jesus, learned the word and how to pray. Said a wedding vow and heard my children sing amazing grace, old timers love to talk about it. How the church went up in no time in the twinkling of an eye. Built on the rock of ages, built to stand the test of time. I grew up on stories about the sweat, the blood, the glory. I thank God I was raised in the church. Last night I had a vision, Jesus came down in the cloud. When that trumpet blew, Brother Guthrie knew the Lord was breaking ground. The church went up in no time, in the twinkling of an eye. Built on the rock of ages, built to stand the test of time. I grew up on stories about the sweat, the blood, the glory. I thank God I'll be raised with all the other sinners Jesus saved in the church. In the church. other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I'm working on a building, working on a building, working on a building, oh my Lord, oh my Lord. It's a Holy Ghost building, a Holy Ghost building. I'm working on a building, I'm working on a building, a Holy Ghost building. I'm working on a building for my Lord, for my Lord. It's a Holy Ghost building, a Holy Ghost building. I'm working on a building for my Lord, for my Lord. If I was a gambler. Tell you what I do, I would quit my gambling and start working on a building too. Working on a building, working on a building, working on a building. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, it's a Holy Ghost building, a Holy Ghost building, working on a building. Working on a building, 
working on a building, working on a building, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, it's a Holy Ghost building, a Holy Ghost building, working on a building, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, it's a Holy Ghost building, a Holy Ghost building. I'm working on a building, oh my Lord, oh my Lord. Amen. 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 Some of the old creeds and the King James Version of the translation of the scriptures talks about the Holy Ghost. We also know it's the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The title of the new CD that I have is He Reminds Me, and it's about the Holy Spirit. The Thursday night before the Friday morning cross, Jesus had the disciples in the upper room. And they were sad because they were kind of understanding that he was going to die. They didn't comprehend it completely. We know that because of the scriptures after the resurrection. But they were sad about him leaving. And he lets them know in John 14, beginning at verse 25, he's told them about his departure, about he's going to go to Jerusalem. He's going to die, suffer at the hands of Pontius Pilate but rise and resurrect. They didn't quite understand that all the way, uh, but they did in retrospect. But he tells them in verse 25 of John 14, all this I, I have spoken while still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, or as we just sung the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name will teach you all things. Now remember 1 Corinthians 3, the spiritual man does not learn from the wisdom of men, but through the Spirit. And this is telling us that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, will teach us. That's amazing. He will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. And he's talking to the disciples. And they've been listening to him for three and a half years. And the Holy Spirit's going to remind them of what he has said. But I also think that that scripture lets us know that Jesus expects for us to read his word so that he can remind us of what he has said. It's difficult to be reminded of something you've never heard of. Now we know the words before that, the Holy Spirit can teach us what we've never heard of because it's supernatural. It led to the writing of this song that the Lord sent me during Passion Week which I think is a blessing for me. I pray it blesses you. And I know that Pastor Corey has taught along these lines in recent weeks. <laughs> When 
I don't know what to pray. He's never late with just the word I need. And he reminds me this fallen world 